Well, before I get started, how many of you guys and gals have uh, wired up or have experience on working on 483 phase system? Okay, we got a few, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, despite all the safety warnings, injuries, uh, and fatalities continue to occur because many people do not fully understand the real hazards with center pivot systems. Furthermore, irrigation systems are installed without adequate electrical grounding and they are not routinely or uh, inspected, maintained, and therein where lies the power. Folks, if you don't get this stuff right, you're dead. And it may surprise you how many people end up that way. Now, just a little bit, am I qualified to do this? Well, I think so. Uh, I've done as much electrical work as many electricians. As a matter of fact, I've had to go behind some electricians and correct their work. Uh, I don't just do this electrical work to meet the National Electric Code or NEC. Uh, but I do it to exceed it. Uh, and at least doing it that way, it's safe. So what about ag safety in general? Can you tell me how many people are killed in ag each year? Well, we actually keep up with those stats. There's a NIOSH or the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health keeps those records on how many farm injuries and deaths occur but their data usually lags anywhere from three to five years. And it's neither, data sets are neither inclusive or complete. In 2009, it was an estimate of 15,000 injuries to farm kids. And in other years, it went over 22,000. In a five year period, nearly 700 kids lost their lives on farms. Kids under 20 years old, in another 11 year period was over 300 kids. Folks, we're killing our farm kids. They're either getting badly hurt or they're killing, but either way they're dying and many of these can be prevented. Accidents, yeah, they happen and they happen all too frequently on the farms. But why is that? Well, because ag is still one of the most independent minded and dangerous fields there is. And the fatality stats prove that. Does it have to be that way? No, but it is. Far too often we hear headlines like these in the media, and they're all truly sad. 55 year old irrigation systems repair man was killed. Co worker turned on the power at the pivot and saw a bright flash. A Demet farmer was electrocuted when he touched the pivot. You think it doesn't happen? Think again. The media always puts pictures with accidents, and thus the faces of the 14-year-old girls that died in the highly publicized Monsanto detasseling accident up north. Again, truly sad. Folks, two more people were killed and another severely handicapped in 2018 in the Texas Panhandle. In this fatality, the farmer was under 20 years old. His mother placed the wreath at the pivot. Sad, and again, dead is dead. We take too much for granted. Now we have a lot of pivots up here in crop production today, and many are aging. And we, as they, require maintenance and checkups. Now when you work with large irrigation systems, there's a lot of safety hazards. But today I'm only gonna focus, like I say, on the electrical. Most people think electrical safety is one of the most important safety concerns and I generally agree. However, dead is dead by any means, so all safety is important. Note, however, that the last item in that list could arguably be the most dangerous one. Now first, you may be in trouble if your electrical controls look like this one. You just don't know the condition, but my suspicion is is that it needs at least checking out or looking at it's better if they look more like this and by the way this is one of my installations 
483 phase electricity. Yeah, it's a big deal. And so you think you know electricity. Are you sure? You better be, because you're betting your life on it every time you hit those control buttons and it can kill you or worse. You can kill others. And then you have to live with that. And I know a few folks who've had to live with that every day of their lives. Now I'm not here to make electricians out of you or even scare you, but you gotta understand three phase power at the levels we're talking about and respect it. Electrical circuits are actually pretty simple, but powerful. Does that mean we shouldn't use electricity? Absolutely not. So what we have here is a simple circuit and it always works in a loop. But when you become part of that loop, you're in deep trouble. Thus the reasoning for the ground and the grounding wires. Okay? If you work on electricity, turn it off before any repairs or inspections. Folks, I like to say there's no second chances with three-phase electricity. Period. And I'm still alive to say that. If you don't know what you're doing, find somebody who does. By the way, that person's usually not your brother-in-law unless you really don't like him. Okay. Also, if you're bothered that day or not in the right frame of mind or you got something else on it, don't do three-phase electrical work. Get your head straight, right, and focused on that work. Proper grounding of that system is essential. Electrocutions are directly related to that improper grounded equipment. Lethal hazards can be prevented if the irrigation systems have a grounding connector from the electrical source connected to a system to a well casing or a grounding rod driven into the ground is usually not sufficient. Grounding according to that NEC requires a separate non-current carrying equipment ground conductor to be run with all the circuits. Unfortunately, this is not always adhered to as ag is exempt status in many states. So what about that pivot point grounding rod? This is all I see at many of the installations and it does generally meet code, but is it enough over time? No, not in my view because I've seen where we have alkaline soils, it reacts with that copper and I've seen those wires disappear. Remember, you're betting your life on that grounding conductor with these systems. Regarding annual checks, as control wires move in the wind, they wear and shorts will occur. Now up on the top of the system, the wiring connections are important too. You check those screws in the terminal blocks at the tower basis, and if they're not checked, I can almost guarantee you that they will become loose. Check the screws at the pivot rotator point. Shown here, I don't have the cover on it, I've seen these wires fall out of these blocks without checks and maintenance. And that's scary when you're dropping a 483 phase wire onto it. Also check for that ground continuity from span to span. This is normally what you see the little green wire here. That's what ties that ground continuity from tower to tower or span to span rather. I like, I've taken these off and I put one on each side. These things rust, they corrode, and they bend with the flexure of the system and they break. And therefore, some people also advocate, well, I'll just put it up there with a chain and that way it won't break. But chains don't provide continuous continuity. It's like the ball and socket on your pickup truck. You have ever seen the lights flicker? Well, there's your ground right there and that's dangerous. Make sure those control lines are secured. As much wind as we got, they become loose are chewed on from critters and birds. They come loose over time. Now most electrical connections on a pivot use screw terminals. That's what most of those blocks of those wires. They loosen over time. So why and how do those terminals become loose? And who cares? Well actually you do because it's a safety issue and it's your safety based issue. Now, this is the formula for expansion and contraction with regards to temperature changes. And don't pull your calculators out. I'm going to give you my rule of thumb answers to this equation for our area. 
coated terminal blocks than copper and or aluminum wires and each has its own expansion coefficient. In a year, I can adjust about a quarter to a half ton per screw on those wires. On older systems that don't get checked, I've literally seen the wires fall out of those terminal blocks. Now here, this is a cross section, you can also see that the terminal block is cracked as well. The phenoplastic isolation wings also generally degrade before the terminals, however. They don't last forever, and I've changed out a lot of these over time. By the way, what's a pivot's general life expectancy? And how old are yours? And are your screws loose? 37% were hazardous because of a lack of a grounding conductor. 40% didn't even have a ground rod attached. 50% failed to have a fuse or means of disconnection. Other situations that were hazardous included loose connections, improper circuit and motor protection, and deteriorated and bare insulation. Again, ag may be exempt, but it doesn't equate to being safe. So they did a follow-up test. Second series of inspections showed similar results. Checked out 77 systems, 10 were classified as lethal at the time they did the inspection. 38 were hazardous, 29 were potentially hazardous. The 10 had current flowing at the time of the inspection or had almost killed somebody shortly before that inspection. NEC had been violated in all 77 tests. Okay, electric electricity. It's just not the voltage that gets you, it's the amperage. Okay, so how much amperage does it take? At that voltage it'll take a half an amp to kill you. You can kind of relate to that if you've ever touched a fence charger. There's 5,000 volts. The reason you don't get killed is because it only shocks you is because they limit that amperage off that fence charger. If you had a little more amperage out of there, it gets you. That won't be the case with these three-phase systems because there'll be a lot more current in it. Now let me tell you a little short story about meter loops, particularly the smart meters of today. They actually happened to one of us on the research field. Smart meters make this situation even worse. Some say I'm against smart meters and that's not true. Also, there's two camps on smart meters position for and against on the use. I see the benefit and condone their use if they are constructed with crossover protection. But not all are and one just doesn't know by looking. What actually signaled us to a problem with one of these is, is one of my guys went to hang a fire extinguisher bracket at the research field when he touched the drill to the building it sparked. Now that shouldn't happen if you're running the drill but when that bit sparked, what he did is I went over there and tested it with a voltmeter and I came back and it had 165 volts on the ground leg, on the neutral. I wanted to know how much current was on it. Surprised the hell out of me when I did it, it was only 40 amps of current running through there. Now what caused it? That smart meter had bridged across there and fed back down the ground loop all the way back to the uh, to to the building. What it turned out is it bridged across there and didn't blow the fuse up on top of the transformer. So for a couple of months, SPS was heating the ground at your expense. Basically, dangerous situation. You bet. So how do you get electrical surges that create this situation? Usually electrical. And what you hope for is they look like this, because then you know exactly what the problem is. It's not that way always, and it's the intermediate ones that partially bridge that create the currents. Not supposed to happen, but it does and it has. Okay, so let's discuss what happened a little bit more actually happened uh, regarding uh, that slug feature in that, that I presented. 
company takes either between 7,600 and 76, 17,600 volts, transforms it down to 480. Okay, he's got to have a ground leg in this case because of the configuration on that panel. I know that that's a corner grounded delta system. It's common with Southwestern Public Service or XL. It's perfectly legal. And so in this case, you had the slug in the right. I always put mine in the center. It's perfectly legal. Why do you want that? Because if you lose that circuit, you want to make sure that ground continuity is all the way back to the ground. As a matter of fact, if you'll look at how that transformer is wired, you'll see that the power company has taken that power line neutral and grounded it with a bare or covered ground wire. Also, there's another problem with that. If you, I'd be willing to bet you, if you go out here and you look at those, you'll find some of them missing. Now, why would they be missing? Somebody's pilfered that copper wire off of those lines. And that's a dangerous situation too. So that's how you can get yourself compromised. Now, remember what I said. If you're between the line and load, you are shocked or killed because the current flows through you to ground and you're in deep trouble. Now, if you're paying attention and I've not lost you, why is the bird not killed at this one? or that one because he's not between the line and the load and that's how a bird sits on a power line and doesn't get fried so I said check your electrical birds play heck with some of your feed wires on your span uh, we had a bird uh, chew up some of these wires and if they short that's how you import that onto that neutral if you don't have a ground wire, you become the neutral when you touch that pivot. We've had kids uh, just off of I-40 go out here and try to rob some of your wiring when they get hard. Maybe they were druggies, we don't know. But anyway, one of our guys went up there the next morning to punch the thing and only five of the seven tires moved. You're lucky he didn't get shorted because the guy left the hot wires loose. If they would have touched the system, it could have killed him. Okay. For recommendation, use qualified service personnel familiar with standards. Uh, shut off those units. Uh, a word about lightning arresters. Uh, at last check, and when I was doing this regularly, SPS would not allow lightning arresters for the same bridge effect we had on the smart meters. They can bridge across because they're just capacitors. So. Don't overfuse. Uh, inspect why a fuse blows. They don't just don't happen by. And don't cut corners. Uh, if you feel a tingle anytime on a system, first look up, thank God, and figure out what went wrong. It just don't happen. All right. Lastly, can you tell me if this is a redneck installation? Oh, come on. Guess. Well, of course it is. Look for the duct tape. Okay. They taped the water leak off from spraying on the electrical box. So I hate to actually admit it, but that's one of ours at one of the remote locations, and we're scheduled to get it changed. So remember, we all have to be safe. Uh, so get your system checks, and I'll stop there. Mm -hmm.